Hey guys, in this video we are taking you to Norway, to their capital city Oslo, but this is going to be a very special trip because this time our family is not going on an airplane, rather we are going on a ferry. So basically from Denmark, every day there is a ferry that goes from Copenhagen to Oslo and it takes about 17 hours. So uh, we spent an entire night in the ship. So it starts at 3 o'clock in the evening and it travels all night on the Baltic Sea and Nordic Sea and then it reaches to Oslo at around 9 o'clock in the morning so it takes about 17 hours then uh, people stay in Norway for around 5 or 6 hours and then it goes back at 3 o'clock and reaches Copenhagen at 9 o'clock so it's gonna be a very uh, good trip so look at this ship it's an amazing ship it's huge and it's like a very huge building so there are like thousands of room inside all kinds of room the cheaper one the most expensive and luxurious ones but uh, overall it's very comfy it's a whole new world inside so this is a pathway towards getting inside of the ship so I'm going with my two kids, in fact three kids, two grown-up kids and one infant and with my wife. And my wife is the one who is making this video. So we're about to start our journey. There you go. We are inside of the ship and there's a staff who is here to welcome us. And this is the central point of the ship where you can go to almost any place in the ship. Because we had a had an infant, so we were given a room that was right next to the stairs. So that it's easy for us to go to the elevator or to any other parts of the ship. So you see, this is a place where you have both the stairs and elevators. Now we are inside of the room. It's a very, very comfortable room. It's very comfy. It has four beds and all of four beds are collapsible. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how to expand these beds. So you just have to pull them off. Look at that, it's very, very comfy. So two on the left side and two on the right side. It's very, very comfortable for four people. Yeah, this is how you open the upper one. So every bed has a quilt, a blanket, a pillow. Now I'm going to show you the toilet. This room has almost everything that one can wish for on a trip. Much better than a five-star hotel room. Look at the toilet. So it has a little uh, seat and also there's a separated place for shower that's the shower place yeah and it has a dryer too normally you're not allowed to bring your own dryer because your own dryer could be of any power for example 1000 watt or something but this is a uh, special dryer that you cannot detach so now you're going towards the terrace of the ship since the ship is not uh, leaving right now it's just staying there and waiting for other passengers so I'm gonna show you how the Copenhagen terminal looks like this is the DFTS terminal at Copenhagen and the time is around 30 minutes to 3 o'clock and the day is very sunny it is sunny but it's very cold very nice view of the water now I'm gonna take you guys to the topmost spot on the ship 
From where you can see almost all four sides of the ship. Yep. There we are. It's all carpeted floor on the topmost part, so you can just lay down and play with your kids and do other stuff. But, and there you go. There's the fun area for the kids. Kids can do a lot of different things here. And it's almost free. So you can just put a 10 Corona coin inside and you can start a whole new game. It's really nice that you can actually leave your kids here and then you can go around. It's a very safe place for the kids. So kids can figure out their own activities here. There's also a swimming area nearby. You just pay a little amount to do the swimming, but I would not prefer leaving my kids to the swimming pool. It's a great fun. It's a great fun to be in the kid. Now I'm going to show you different parts of the fun land. Yeah, you're having a very close game. Yeah, my son has just beaten me. One thing to note down is that there's no internet in the ship. I mean, you can buy the internet on one device, but generally there's no internet. And I think it's a good idea because uh, if you have the internet freely available here, then you are in your cell phone and gadgets all the time. I think it's a great opportunity to have some time out with your kids and family without having to use your mobile phones. And the internet connection that you can buy for your device is pretty expensive, so I would rather not do that. There's also this area for very little kids, for example, infants. It's like the jumping balls area for the kids, so you can just leave your little kids here. And they will have a great time. Yeah, there are also vending machines, so if you want to buy some nuts or sprinkles or stuff, so you can buy that. So this is the swimming pool area. And what you can do is you can buy the swimming suits and then you can use the swimming suit for, you can do the swimming for an entire day. And there are like three different kinds of swimming pool for different age groups. 
depending on how old are you now we're going to show you the sea view now that ship is up and running moving towards norway so i'm going to show you the view of the sea from the deck so we are at the open terrace with a lot of uh, seatings and stuff so you can just come out here enjoy some fresh air enjoy some cold nordic air and also have lunch or drink or something and the reason it's going very slow is that it's on purpose going very slow and it's taking 17 hours so that people can have great time in the ship now this is the sea view from wi within the ship from the window but it looks great I'm pretty sure camera cannot justify what the view actually looks like but it's great it was amazing yeah we are very much in the middle of the sea we can't see any sign of islands or any sign of uh, land from million miles around yeah it's a whole new world inside the ocean there you go now it's pretty much evening and sun is about to <laughs> set later on I'm gonna show you the actual sunset view which is amazing which is really amazing from the ocean, from the ship. It's pretty calm, isn't it? But it's very, very cold. Even though it's April, but it's very cold. Because we are pretty much into Norwegian territory and the temperature is maybe four or five degrees but it feels like very cold yeah now we are inside of the bar so there's a bar inside of this ship so right now it's the evening time so there's nobody out there but when it's the middle of the night or probably 10 o'clock then there is music there is drinks food and a lot of stuff So these Nordic days are pretty long. The time is almost around nine o'clock, but it's still sunny. Yeah, so at this time of the year in April, the days are getting longer and longer. So right now the day this uh, is long as like 19 hours, but in June or July, it gets to like 21 hours It's an amazing sunset view There you go. It is about to set. Okay, this is the next morning 
and we slept all night it was a very good sleep and now we're about to start our breakfast so one thing to know is that the breakfast is not complimentary in the room price so you have to pay for it you can buy the package with the room and breakfast and save some money or you can decide for yourself but we already had this breakfast covered with the room so we're just gonna show uh, at the reception of the breakfast the uh, our uh, receipt and then we're gonna have this lovely breakfast it's a huge buffet breakfast so you have a lot of different kinds of things that you can eat in the breakfast so there are different kinds of breads different kind of cheese butter salamis and then there are all sorts of uh, fruits as well yeah we have sausages we have nuts we have cakes and there you go the the best thing about having the breakfast in the cruise is that you can eat a wonderful breakfast and then you can enjoy the uh, beautiful view of these Norwegian island so that means we are very very close to the Oslo city and it's about like one more hour and then we're in Oslo so when you're close to Oslo you sail around these beautiful islands they look amazing there are hardly any people living on these islands but they still look beautiful so the staff in the breakfast area is very very supportive so they will serve you tea coffee and they will on and on on and off uh, keep cleaning your tables which is good and especially for the families with kids they do some extra care so it's amazing look at that it's beautiful we're still not there yet we're still pretty much far from Oslo and we are passing between these Norwegian islands there you go the ship has stopped and we have arrived at Oslo city and we are about to get out of the ship yeah the doors are open and we are slowly and gradually moving outside of the ship yeah sometimes there is a passport control uh, staff as well checking the passport but that's not the case all the time so this time there was hardly any passport checks it's a huge terminal that takes passengers from ship to outside there you go we are out in the Oslo city it's beautiful this is the ship that we came from this is how it looks like from outside it's pretty cloudy in Oslo it's all the time I've traveled like 100 times in Oslo and I don't remember any time when it, it was sunny it's always the gray sky in Oslo the still is a beautiful city so here it works here's how it works it so we're gonna stay in Oslo city for around six hours because we have to get back here at the same spot at around three o'clock because we have to get back to Copenhagen city so for six hours we're gonna enjoy, enjoy some stuff in Oslo city there are lots of different kinds of things that you can do in Oslo city it's it's amazing city 
Now we are slowly and gradually walking towards the center of the city. It's always a good idea to save the Oslo city's offline map because sometimes the internet connection from your other country might not work here and sometimes it works. So if you have an offline map in, of Oslo city in your Google Maps, then it doesn't really matter if you have the internet or not. Then you can actually look for top cities, top places in the Oslo city and you can see them. So I think six hours are more than enough for you to see the top attractions in the Oslo city. There's my little baby. She's almost one year old. And she's enjoying as much as everyone else is enjoying. I really like this area. So as uh, every time we come to Oslo out of the ship, so this is the first place that welcomes us. It's a fun area for our kids with a lot of different kinds of slides. So we always stop by here, and my kids play here. We can still see our ship from far away. So we are relaxed that this ship is still there. That's going to take us back to our country. So that big white building that you see here, it's called Opera Hall. It's the famous Norwegian Opera Hall. Now I'm taking you guys to the inside or actually on the top of Opera Hall. Yeah, it's a common traditional thing just like Sydney Opera all the European capitals they have an opera hall and this one the Norwegian one the, Os uh, the one in Oslo city is a very special one so there are no stairs I mean there are stairs but it's like you need to walk towards the top of the opera hall it's a pretty long walk. Now we are again down from the Opera Hall. And now we are moving towards the central station. Now we are moving inside the Opera Cent uh, the Oslo Central Station. Oslo city is also famous for its very different kind of statues, so you're gonna be amazed by seeing these different statues here. The best thing about Norwegian people is that we're, they're really helpful. So if you're like lost in the city and if you need any help, they'll be more than welcome to help you out. And I re uh, one thing I really like in the central station is that there is a staff that is always there to help you out. Because in these European countries, uh, there are hardly any instructions in English in the bus stations or airports. So you always need help from people. But the good thing in this uh, Oslo Central Station is that there is a staff that is just there to help you guys out. So if you need a train passes for 24 hours or five days or six days or three days they have different kind of packages that you can buy and they will help you out in choosing what suits your needs it's a pretty big central station it's probably bigger than the airports in a lot of countries There are many forex exchange par, uh, 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 spots in the Oslo Central Station. 
because uh, one thing that is different in the Scandinavian countries from the rest of Europe is that they have their own currency even though they are part of Euro but they're not uh, having the Euro currency implemented in their country they have their own Corona for example in Denmark it's Danish Corona in Nor Norway it's Norwegian Corona and in Sweden it's Swedish Corona but at uh, the forex exchange, you can get your currency converted into Norwegian cor uh, Corona. Only from the main well-known currencies. For example, you can get the dollars converted into Corona. And you could also get the Euro converted into Corona. One thing I really like about the Oslo is that, uh, especially the central station, is that it's really not heavily populated by the people. For example, if you go to other countries' central station, for example, Paris's central station or Berlin's uh, central station, it's like jam-packed with people all the time, 24-7 a week. So that is what I was talking to you about. So we're just getting help from the staff that is there to help us out. So he's actually guiding us through some different places in the Oslo. Yep. So we have Burger King here. Now we are outside of the central station and we are moving towards the walking street. One thing I really like about these European capitals is that they have a walking street where cars and transports are not allowed, where you are only allowed to walk and it's amazing. And this uh, walking street in Oslo is one of its kind. So, as I said earlier, it's uh, well known for its sculpture. So there are many different kind of kind of sculptures that uh, you can amaze from. Now we are walking in the walking street, and we are enjoying the culture, food, and shopping together. So all these buildings on both sides of the walking street, they're very historical. They're almost like 200 years old, but well maintained. So inside there are shops, there are bars, there are restaurants, but still they represent the old culture. Today is Sunday and most of the shops are closed. Only restaurants and grocery stores are open. I kind of like it this way because if the if all the shops are open then it's very difficult to walk with three kids. But today because of all the shops closed there aren't that many people so it's easy to walk with three kids. Yeah, and it's a pretty long walking street. It's almost like two kilometers. 
and one of the corner of this walking street is from the Oslo Central Station and it leads to the famous Oslo Palace we're gonna show you in a moment look at the birds how much synchronizes their movement yeah that is like the city town hall of the Oslo so every time I come here there's somebody protesting against something which is nice There we go, we are in the Royal Palace. It is the most famous Royal Palace in Oslo, but you have to have a, you have to walk a lot to get there. So we walked almost two kilometers from Oslo Central Station to get there, but it was nice. It's very special and it's very historical. Now we are walking back on the walking street so it's the two kilometer walk back towards the central station and now I'm taking you guys to the random streets near the central station and the rain has started already it's always very nice to walk in the random streets in any new city This is a very famous pink building. I don't know what it is. It's probably some uh, political, some parliament, but this is the building that welcomes every time you get out of the ship. So you can always see from miles in Oslo city. I don't get a lot of information from Google about this uh, pink building. But I'm sure that it's an important building. I really like these red buses here in Oslo city. So the public transport system in Oslo is amazing. They have uh, buses, they have trains, they have trams and the metro as well the fast trains underground so if you are on a single day trip in Oslo what you can do is you can buy a 24 hours ticket that works for all buses trains metro and trams within the Oslo city I do think that it's a good idea to buy a 24 hours ticket than buying individual tickets because then you end up spending a lot of money It's always raining in Oslo and that's a norm in Oslo. But the good thing about uh, the summertime is that the days in Oslo are the longest than the rest of the Europe. 
so sun rises at around 2 o'clock in the morning and sets at around 11 o'clock in the night so you have hardly 3 hours night you would really be amazed by these beautiful colors of houses and buildings in Oslo some buildings are completely yellow painted and some are pink painted right next to each other so overall this combination and this color contrast looks amazing it's really catchy I also think that in Oslo it's a good idea to talk to locals, talk to Norwegian people because they are very humble and very nice. And they will tell you a lot of different things about Oslo city, a lot of good information that you wouldn't find on the internet. There is no chance of getting lost in the city because all the roads and buildings are well structured. So the geography of the city is pretty easy to understand. Yeah, now we are moving towards the famous Eckershus Fortress. It's a fort on the top of the hill and there's a pretty much walk towards uh, this fort because we have to reach the topmost point on this uh, fortress. So you have to walk within the random streets in Oslo towards this fort. There are always horses around that are used by the royal family members. Yeah, there you go. We are at the entrance of the Arkesis Fortress. Yeah. the royal family members wouldn't mind touching the horses. Yeah, we are about to go inside of this fort. It's pretty historical. It's pretty historical, still well maintained. This fort has a lot of ancient pools that are still maintained and a lot of uh, green gardens inside.
now there's a little bit of uh, tracking so it's a track that will take you towards the top of the f uh, the fort We chose a very good day because there are hardly any people because otherwise if you're in the top holiday season there are like millions of people who are going towards the top of this fortress which is also good but with the kids it's also good that you choose a day where there are not that many people now we are pretty much on top of it from here we can see the whole Oslo city from one corner to another Yeah, there's still some Yeah, there's still some areas in the fort that we didn't explore yet. We're going to take you there very soon. Some of the stuff is pretty new inside of the fort. So there's a wall from where you can see one side of the city. There you go, here's the wall, we're gonna get on the wall and we're gonna show you the whole Oslo city, but only one side, not the other side. And if you have kids, you have to be very careful with them because it's very high up and it's very deep down there across the wall. So with the kids, especially with infants, Parents need to be extra careful. Yeah, that's a view from that wall. You can see the amazing sea, the buildings, and also the ship terminals. Amazing. So more ships are coming after we arrived. That's a beautiful city. This Oslo city is a good combination of uh, modern and ancient infrastructure. And this is a central part of this uh, fortress. And most of the time it is closed. I do remember that when I came last year, like two years ago, this place was closed. But we uh, we are so lucky that this time it is open and we are able to get inside of it. Yeah, but it's beautiful. There's also a museum here where they are sh presenting a lot of different stuff from the ancient times. But you have to pay for it to get inside. But if you want to stay here and look around the building, at this spot it is absolutely free. Yeah, now we are outside of the Orcasis for Fortress and we just found out that there are some good uh, amusement areas around this fortress. So we're just stopping by here and letting my kids enjoy so we're gonna stop by here for like 15 to 20 minutes and let my kids play with uh, slides and swings It's time to leave, it's time to leave the fortress and we are walking away and we are gonna get inside into the random streets of Oslo again. I 
heard from a lot of my friends who just came here to Oslo on a single day trip and then they fell in love with the city because of the people and because of this modern and ancient infrastructure and then they ultimately started living here so that can happen to you as well it is possible that you really like the city so much that you ultimately end up living here quite possible there are lots of uh, pros or maybe some cons of living here as well one of the cons here is the weather it's like cloudy and gray all the time throughout the year but still uh, when it gets sunny for like a month or two it's amazing because then you have like 24 hours of sun but in winters the day gets very very shorter hardly like you will have the day time for five hours so sun will rise at nine o'clock or probably ten o'clock in morning and will set again at two o'clock so it's a bit depressing time of uh, around that part of the year so if you belong to a very hot place for example the countries near the equator for example Middle East or subcontinent or Caribbean and if you start living here in the winters it is highly likely that your body will run short of vitamin D so it's always a good idea to keep taking the supplements the vitamin D supplements in these areas where there's there are areas in the where there are times in the year when there's no sun for like two or three months so it's always a good idea to keep ta taking these vitamin D supplements yeah now our amazing trip is finally coming to an end we are slowly and gradually walking back towards our ship it's again a long walk but you know all the important attractions of the Oslo city they are very close to the central station like hardly one kilometer or two kilometers away from the central station so even if you don't want to buy a 24 hours ticket it's totally fine you can just walk towards that important attraction in the Oslo city and we're back in the ship luckily it gets a little sunny it got a little sunny at this time we can see the sun here and also the beautiful Norwegian island these are the same island that I was showing you when I was coming towards the Oslo city where nobody lives but it's just trees and mountains but it's amazing because I live in Denmark where are there are no mountains for million miles around it's just a flat country but in Norway you would really like to, you would really like it when you would see mountains some really 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 tall mountains as well yeah and we are saying goodbye to Norway The sea water is so calm. Finally, I found an island where there are houses and there are people living, so it's also great to know. So this is an isolated Norwegian island with actually people living. It's great. 
I'm not sure how is it connected to the rest of Norway. I don't see any bridge. So I'm sure the transportation will be via ferries or ships. Yeah, one thing that is very amazing about this TFT ferry is that if you are in a very bad health, like critical health, so you will get help by helicopter. So we had a patient who we had a person who had a heart attack, and uh, they ran the staff, the medical staff inside of the ship, they ran short of the medicines, so they called their headquarters and they sent a helicopter with the required medication. So it's really good. So they do have the medical staff here in the ship to take care of you for the basic stuff. But if you have something critical, they would also get the emergency help through helicopters, which is really great. But I think guys, we are slowly and gradually coming towards the end of this video. I'm sure you must have liked this video. And if you did, uh, please like, subscribe and share this video to other people who are interested in traveling. Thank you very much guys, 